Hello everybody and welcome back to the Asia League. We're here for our third game of the day. It's Direwolves and Haseeb Warriors. We skipped our pre-show because we've had a few tech issues today. So uh -oh. we're jumping straight on into it. And have a look at that. Bang! Straight back to us. Oh no, <laughs> it crashed. And I, just in time to introduce my lovely co-caster. Pangu, how you feeling? Hello. Man? Feeling good, feeling excited. Uh, you know, there was some uh, etching mentioned earlier, and I feel like that's the same thing's happening now because I really wanted to see that game happening. And then just like that, you get that panic error saying, oh no, it crashed. Yeah. Oh no, indeed. Well, let's introduce the game anyway because we've got to get the game going, so we may as well talk about it. So it's Die Wolves and Haseeb Warriors. Die Wolves had a really rough start to the stage, Nick. They played. Fury in the opening game, and they only won a single round. But last week, they managed to redeem themselves a little bit, and they beat Rival. Um, and on the opposing side, Haseeb Warriors, well, they had a pretty poor game in their opening against No Cap. They lost that 7-3. And then they had a really good showing in their second game. They were tied 3-3 at the half on Cafe against Bleed Until... on attack. And then they had to forfeit because they couldn't get a player in. Yeah, bit of a disaster in... Uh... Julio, earlier today when Bleed they won, he also said that they actually really wish that, that game had been played out because, you know, Bleed wanted to prove that they were in fact a better team. But also, has he Boris, like, they must have felt the same way because if you go 3-3 on the split on Cafe against Bleed, you're feeling pretty damn good about yourself. So I always wonder what would have been the real outcome there? Could that have been a major upset? Because Bleed getting a 7-0 victory for round diff is a massive deal maybe later on the stage. We've got a replay of the Diewolves reaction when the game crashed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Rambe, bro. Oh, Rambe's loving it. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, well, I'm just glad that we get Harambe back in. For people who have watched Asia before, everyone knows that Harambe is so well known for his amazing reactions, his great interviews. He's got his little dance, which he gave us after they won last week as well. Um, but he spent quite a bit of time in the coaching role, which is a, a disappointment. Um, we're just getting everyone back into the game, by the way. Hopefully it won't take too long. Uh, Nick, let's talk expectations. Die Wolves, Haseeb Warriors. We kind of know who's favored to win this one, right? Like, Haseeb Warriors are... There's not a lot of high expectations coming into this stage, but how much can we take away from that bleed game from the six rounds we got to see? Should we start getting hyped and thinking that maybe Haseeb are actually capable of taking down a team like Die Wolves? I mean, earlier on today, in the beginning of the show, we all showed our predictions, and I believe it's like the vast majority of the staff here, the talent members, actually believe that Haseeb is going to be victorious today. So <laughs> I do think that that bleed game has kind of turned the tide from expectations, which is kind of dangerous and scary because how much does six rounds actually prove on Cafe of all maps that plays nothing like Nighthaven Laps, which is the match in this series? It's hard to say, but I do think there's reasons to be excited for both teams in this series. Yeah, for Die Wolves, they've kind of been on a bit of a downwards trajectory for quite some time now. Um, but they did get their win against Rival. And that, to me, was at least a moment of, okay, they're not so down bad that they're losing to a team that's only just entered the league for the first time. Mm. But I still don't know where to place them. Because in Stage 1, we were really disappointed with their regular stage. And then, oh, look at that, we're in the game. Woo! Amazing. So we're here on Nighthaven Labs, by the way, guys. And just to continue my point about Die Wolves, in Stage 1, they looked really rough around the edges. But in their quarterfinals, they had a, a really important win against the now Knock Knock roster to make top four in the league. And that, I think, was a big moment for me where I was thinking, okay, I thought I was simply on the way out. I didn't think they would actually have a chance of contending again. But maybe they actually can after seeing what they were able to do last time in the BO3s. Oh, boy. Have you seen the Diavol's operator bands, by the way? Monty oh, they... and Flash, the double shield duty. Oh man, if you uh, if you recall that final clubhouse round between Diablos and Fury, you sometimes you ban an operator because your opponent might be good at it, and sometimes you have to nerf yourself perhaps. <laughs> Diablos yeah. did not win the round with Monty. That's what I'm getting at here. <laughs> yeah, I'm very so, true. yeah, yeah. Okay. Bomb. Well, at least they're into it now. They are on the attack. And looks like this is a very quick hard breach focus, not going for the roam clear straight up. That said, they have actually split a couple of the players on the top floor, hunting down the roamers. We've got Taha up here. Uh, one of the downsides of not playing like a band 
Because, yeah, there might be Thatcher or secondary MPs, but mind you, the Maverick was banned by his Sea Warrior, so not playing any real Walter now is a bit of a shame because now you can get bombsite pressure immediately, force back the roamers, Jackal Pink comes out, and now a bit of a trouble here upstairs, maybe. Yeah, but this is just a 1v1, and Bin Bin loses it. Taha protected by the reinforcements, and Bin Bin just oh. got way too aggressive there. Pika is able to cut him off on the drop. However, the numbers are even, but this roam is still very much alive. Kind of is, kind of isn't. It's a bit awkward at least. No intel from Hesi Warriors. I mean, they got those Valkyrie cams, so I don't think I see any yellow pink squad right now. It's a battle back and forth, but for Hesi, at least it's a 1v1 for now. Attackers not capitalizing together, but Picanso actually wins out again in his third engagement. Okay, wow, a big round from Souffle, it seems, as the Roam has finally finished off. The Jackals found four picks. It's all up to Hasib now. The man of the hour. He's got to make his way forward. He's not able to do that. Pika is just holding him, and that's an ace. One of the most underwhelming aces I've seen in a while, but an ace nonetheless. Pika cleans house, and it's a great opening round for Direwolves. It's one of those rounds where you see, like, a silent killer, because they were all technically, like, low-impact kills. I mean, they're valuable, right? You win your 1v1s five times in a row, but they weren't to make it or break it, and they're very farly spread out throughout the entirety of that round. But Hasib Warriors, again, if you don't have Walt and I, when a 2 when a two bar ban is available, for example, the Mammoth ban is also open, then walls will always get opened up. You gotta play out the band and install the time. Because remember, the goal isn't necessarily to guarantee the walls to be closed forever, because that should only happen if your opponent makes a mistake, but it's to stall out like 30, 60 seconds, force the EMPs or the Kali's or verticality, for example. The whole concept of playing defense in Rainbow Six Siege is to set up these different difficulty or skill checks rather for the attackers hey gotta breach this wall if there's nothing to deny it well you just place any hard breacher press middle mouse button and open it if there's a mute okay now i need an emp or a second mp there's a bandit now you need more active utility so you have to try and make it difficult for your opponent to actually achieve their goals and in that very opening round i don't feel like a sieb accomplished that and it also shows us how easily diabolos could like walk through the room and also at the very end walk through the side itself Yeah, Diwall's looking really confident here. I didn't really know what to expect out of Nighthaven between these teams. Last time Diwall's played this, they were smashed by Bleed 7-2. That was in the EWC qualifiers. That was actually the game that eliminated them from contention mm. of going to EWC. And on the flip side, last time Hasid played it, was also in the same qualifiers and actually lost it to Knock Knock. Diwall's themselves have beaten Knock Knock on this map very convincingly before, so... I mean, aside from just the base level of skill we expect out of these teams, this should be a favored map. See this round, the banders on the board, we see the immediate response there. They see, okay, bandage trick and the IT breach. Let's all run really quickly towards the connector wall instead, pop that open. Now they can put their entire focus towards one single part of the map here. Thankfully for them, Bandit was rotating off to actually put the Bandit battery on a mirror window opposite of the map. So he should be able to get both these walls. You want so a small breach open, divers they get what they want here, but look how much time it took and utility as well. That's the difference between a bandit and no bandit. So, I would even argue right now, I see they are super okay with this situation. They still got a spare bandit battery, they got the mirror windows. The only issue is, I see Bond's piece is injured on smoke way too early in this round. If they can revive him, keep him alive, those toxic babes will be very crucial later in this round. And he is, but meanwhile the push is coming on through already and the Glaz is ready to make a swing happen. Seal, oh, Ooh. good pre-fire from him. Almost finds another one as well. But Bin Bin has gone down to a C4. It really comes down to the Glaz to make good on these entries, but he can't see much and he is choking on the gas. He does find his pick and it looks like it may be enough done now. By Direwolves, an easy lockout for Souffle. What a game he's having so far on the Glaz. Big rounds. Direwolves looking completely uncontested here, Pengu. They're in full control. I mean, these rounds are ending so incredibly fast. Nighthaven Labs kind of plays like a consulate or a bank where we tend to see, you know, those final 20, 30, 40 seconds in a round more often than not. We've not really gone down there just yet. First, second round are pretty much over in the first minute, 10 seconds or so. At least it's a very big uh, advantage to one team. 
both of course being dire wolves. I love that we see in the very first round the anti roam, like the jackal, for example. Then in the previous round, we see the execute operators like glass come into play as well. This just shows that the eyeballs, they got different ways to deal with different um, different problems, rather. And that's exactly the kind of depth that you want to have in, like, your strat book when you're playing Rainbow Six Siege. But now the thing is, as the sea borrowers, they go through these different bomb sites. You know, they showed the first time, diables to do a counter. Well, when they showed the second time, like, running it straight back to the same exact bomb site of this CCTV one, what will diables do now? They've shown their pocket strat, they've shown the glass, they probably can't do that again. So now they have to do this in a different way, but try and achieve that same result of domination. Which is funny because on the flip side, Hasib are actually doing the exact same thing that they did last time, right? Like, they actually are. <laughs> as a defensive side, they're like, hey, we saw your Glaz and weird push. We're just going to run the exact same strat, even down to the mirror that's facing into Connector as well. So I don't know, like, yeah, it's on Diwolves to change, but in theory, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They have changed regardless. Where's this Ying going to cook? Could be Aqua side, like not right now, but late round, because there's no warden. The big question that I have is how much drone information they, you know, achieved in the uh, in the drone phase of all things, because most of the drones, if not all, are still alive. So I think they're working from very little information. Once they pop up in the walls and they drone the bomb set itself, if they can spot like three or four defending operators, they'll quickly realize that hey, there's no actual counter for the Ying, so you can enter Aqua, you can take Catwalk. You can push connector. I think uh, it's purely up to you. But also, the bandit trick here could pull well, that's really good. Than previously. Oh. Wow. Oh, it's close. I mean, so solid though. Unfortunately, Patat does lose his life, but he almost did enough there, right? Like he tricked the yeah. heart, the secondary heart breach charge, and he tricked the second segment of the ace. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to get out safely. The Azami wasn't in position to come and support him, chuck out a Kiba, and protect him. So he does fall. Without much of a contest, early pick for Diwolves for the third time in a row now. They definitely are in full control, and you see how decisive they are as well. Go connector, pop the wall, rotate over, EMP, double hop breachers. Like, they're not really wasting any time or wasting any movement, so that's why the timer is so much in their favor as well. 1 minute, 20 seconds to go. There we go, a kill for defenders finally, back to a 4v4. But as it's happening, something is always being traded back, right? Another Selma goes out, more heart destruction, but they don't have a way in on that IT breach. Diwolves might not have gotten the entry path they wanted. Plan B is going to be Ying popping off on an entry possibly. Let's see if Sufli goes Aqua or Breach or where he's going to end up at. I'm just seeing that the Flores decides to prioritize the Kiba Barrier in sight there rather than the one that was actually on the Rafters itself because I don't think Rafters control has been found. Really aggressive here from Taha. Last time he was caught out of position. But he's still looking to be a nuisance. The problem is, as soon as Diwolves get numbers advantage on site, which they do Ooh. now, this could be an overwhelm from the attacking side. Hasib do not have enough bodies up, quite simply, to protect against this push. And it looks like they're going to start moving in with the Ying. Watching their flank as well, but the Ying's Candela goes forward. And here comes the Execute up on Rafters. Harambe finds his. Traded back, but it should be good for the trade back again by Diwolves. And even though Hasib are able to find a few, Diwolves just storm through with their superior numbers and dominate the site. And again, Diwolves, they have a really good understanding strategically of what the win condition they are. They wanted the ITP to control. They want a catwalk. We saw that from their player behavior in the middle of that round. But when they realized that, hey, we got bandit trick, we can't like take catwalk that easily. Let's rotate that Ying over to Aqua side like we spoke about in the prep phase of the round, basically. Diwolves having that understanding is vital for this game to go in their favor because it shows that if plan A doesn't work, their plan B is solid. And I might even think to myself, they might have a third way to do that as well if Aqua didn't seem likely because of a Warden, for example. So just great problem solving, good adaptation in like the mid rounds, even when things kind of go a little bit sideways. Has Seep Warriors, they need to try and control the pace a little bit better. Yeah, they got to kill down to a four versus four, but then they didn't do anything super productive or proactive since then. And uh, they're just losing out in that mid stage of the round. That's the scary thing for Zebra. It's not like Diwolves are doing anything particularly crazy. It's not like they're relying on one specific strat. Diwolves just look calm. They look pretty chill yeah. about it. They're not afraid to just take things one step at a time. Simplify the game, and often, if you just have better fundamentals than the opposing team, if you have a good read, you can just simplify the game. Diwolves don't have to get fancy with it. 
They just wait for that opening pick to come their way. Get all the breaches going. Clear some of those keeper barriers. Find out where those players are on site. Start making a move in. You're probably at a 5v4 or a 4v3 by that point anyway. And Die Wolves are absolute gunners. We're seeing that. Pika, 9 and 1 right now. Yeah. Three rounds into the game, and he's nearly hit 10 kills. It's actually pretty gross because <laughs> when that happens and no one is shutting him down, you can just have a player take over. It happens, I would say, pretty frequently these days across most regions where there are just teams out there that can have one player, you know, completely pop off, carry, you know, maybe the attacking or defending side. Then you go on side swap and the entire team shows up all of a sudden. Typically, it's attack where you have a sole player pop off because it's a snowball effect. You get the entry, you get the second, then you're on bombs and execute, and all you gotta do is hold angles. The hard part for most attacking teams is to get the entry. The fact that Pika can do it so consistently right now gets his entire team towards the bomb side so much easier and simpler, and everyone has to do less work because Pika steps up. Yeah, we saw it earlier today as well with uh, Azuki on Rival. Yeah. Unreal performance. 20 kills in his third ever game. Here's a big opener, though, from Taha. He was hunted last time he played in this position. Now he has been spotted. He has been taken out. Now Taha looking to get away as well as the Deimos track comes down. I mean, he's been worth his weight in gold here. He's taken down the verticality of the buck, and he's retreated back to site. That's a much more proactive round right now. As he borrows to clear the purpose, is it guys just go aggressive, fish for a first kill, and fall back relatively quickly, at least in the player that got tracked uh, by the demos? The question is now, where do they find that line in the sand? Are they gonna overstay their welcome or fall back, you know, and give everything oh. up? They're gonna overstay it to swing out very slowly there. And that's the issue. If you get that kill and Valkyrie falls back, either the teammates fall back with that operator or you stay together because this right. is not how you're gonna win the round. Disaster. Oh, yeah, that is so disappointing because the team had such a fantastic position. Baz overpeaks a little bit. I mean, that's just unfortunate. But then the mute to try and retreat through the same avenue is a huge red flag. The Valkyries regress, but guess what? Din is actually hidden here. And if Taha baits for him, I think Din is actually going to be on for a kill. You can see Taha trying to bait to the best of his ability. Goes for another swing, actually gets here into kitchen and is taken down. Din now has to have an impact. No! <gasps> Finds his kill. Can't find the oh. second, though. Pika, low HP, but he's done what's needed. Bomb located by attacker. Demos, though. The perfect operator in 2v1 favoring the attackers, of course. If they can join out the mirror, spot the operator, activate the oh. demo striker. The C4 goes out. It's down to a 1v1 between Souffle and a Seep one's piece. 35 seconds left. A Seep, they need this round. They need that 3-1 scoreline. Here comes the death mark, as you said. This is surely going to be a round win for the attacking side, but no! Hasib holds his nerve. Despite being tracked, he finds the pre-fire with the vector. And his team have found their first round on the defense. A round that looks so winnable, despite those small hiccups from both teams, actually. Ends up going to the mirror, who is being tracked down to a very big surprise on my end. I like this attempt here of Valkyrie baiting for so long and really putting in that story like, oh, hey guys, I'm aggressive, I'm looking for a kill, I'm looking for a kill, I'm being stupid, shut me down. It's not clean, but it works out. This C forward here saves the round, default cam isn't shot out. It's a great read there from Hasib. The wall bang, the full commitment, knowing that you're going to lose out in like a very long engagement due to up being up against the demos. It shows confidence from Hasib. Despite the fact they were down 0-3, they called the tactical timeout, likely to kind of just ready the troops, say, guys, come on, believe in yourself, believe in each other, fight back, don't just keep giving up space for free, we're defenders, this is our map, try and hold on to it. So they're playing these mini games right now, they got two more rounds of defense to kind of try and round up as many rounds as possible, but if Pika has anything to say about this, he's going to stop that as fast as he can. Tagger reaping onto the Blitz, followed by the Ying on Harampe as well. They can go fast, they can get very chaotic, and that's what Diabolos, they found so much success in their first two rounds. Yeah, because even though it's a good sign that Hasib won that round, it was up a clutch, and they're on defense, and they still have to push in order to just even up the half. Like, they can't win this half, regardless. So, I am... Um, I don't know, I'm excited, but I'm not getting ahead of myself yet for Hasib.
Skywolves have looked in control for pretty much this whole game, and something that they've done that I'd like to quiz you about, Nick, is we've seen the Striker pick every single round using those secondary yeah. hard breach charges. It looks like Recruit is actually like a viable operator now. On the attacking side, I would say, yeah, you can get all the second neutral that you want. Oh, they're gonna go for it, actually. Hold on a second. Yeah. It seems to be an early execute onto the top floor, very quick. But Baz is doing a great job here with the Legion, the T5 SMG. Peek is down on the ground, the Blitz. And Baz has found another one! Unreal from Baz! What a hold on the top floor from the Legion! It might not be the ace, but it might as well have been. That's unreal! The round was over! Before it even started. Oh, uh, it sounded like one or two goo mines hit the players on Aqua side, the Ying and the Blitz to kind of shut down the execute. And given how early Pika died on Blitz, it must have been something like that that happened. And that's the way you win the round as a defender. If they're gonna go for a fast attack Blitz rush, well, you kill the Blitz, there is no Blitz rush any longer. You'll see Souffle died immediately, Pika died shortly after, injured actually for quite a while. So just a huge single play upstairs. When I saw the attack at I thought, okay, they're gonna go for like, go you know, straight into stock window, try and take first block control, just take side control basically, but no, they wanted that anti-roam, wanted to take verticality, and they were denied. But, to get back to the recruit, I do think that Striker, the attacking recruit, is somewhat playable, more so than Sentry. Because secondary utility and attack is so strong, you can play secondary MP and Harbridge Gadget, as we've been seeing more often than not. But say that they play like a Wamai and a Jaeger, you can play flashbangs and smokes just to like burn, or flashbangs nades to try and use nades against the burn. You have so many options for any setup possible, whereas on defense, it's a lot more about the primary gadget, right? The Milusi Banshees, the Fenrir Mines, the Valkyrie Cameras, the Mirror Windows. It's not so much about, hey, look at me, I have barbed wire. Like, <laughs> it's not a huge deal. So I do think that it's, uh, Striker's pretty good, whereas Sentry is a little bit underwhelming. Is this a run out? Oh, I was so tempted. He's just waiting for someone to push. I reckon he, he wins this one out, a run out, like mm. one out of ten times. He must have heard that. Uh, opportunity's gone begging, though. Yeah, he's patient. Too patient to make it work, but better safe than sorry. I've been waiting for someone to make the entry, thinking, hey, this door looks pretty safe, right? Someone is going to come down here, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Bandit trigger wow. is successful, actually. Okay. okay. So, we're phenomenal. learning. Round by round. Bandit getting better and stronger. That's gonna stumble Divals a bit here, because that was their plan A. They only really have one go. Now they gotta rotate the Thatcher over of Harambe instead. He's actually made his way inside the building instead. Back outside they go. Second attempt, maybe? Yeah, I'm and seeing a lot of... with that ping. Yeah, well, they must know that the Bandit has left. Yeah. And Souffle, meanwhile, has killed Taha, the Valkyrie. Little hunt going down downstairs. Still cameras for Taha to use. Oh, good thing that we still have a Selma left here on the ace, otherwise there wouldn't be much util to try and counter that mirror window. Oh, Fata, oh. no! That's devastating! Went to go for the late reinforcement, but Souffle was down below with the pistol and found him. That's a two-player advantage now for Direwolves. Amos is so strong on this map as well, with all that self-destruction. If Souffle stays down downstairs, they get the trackers going, they can hit the side horizontally and virtually at the same time. You see it right here, scan the player, look what they are, and take them down. This is surely a free kill, gets the information, starts to pepper some bullets down through. The player's trying to fight him back again, but it's not easy, Din. Finally, <laughs> will eventually go down, surely, no, not yet, apparently, <laughs> there it happens, my god. I can't believe how long that man stayed alive. It took Harambe coming in from the other side to finish him off for the end, and the round is over. I see Warriors put to rest, but the yeah, Unreal Half from Direwolves is certainly a punishing end to it as well. This is why Demos is so strong in Night Laps by the way. So the beams in the floor go from north to south. And on some maps, it would basically mean that you can't really get these long lines of sight. But if you look at that replay that we just witnessed, you can stand in that games room and see like a straight line across the entire bomb side on all the playable positions. That's why Demos is so strong here. Every map has self destruction. That's not like the big deal. The big deal is which way the lines go, basically. So you see right here, you can see from north to south 
on the B bomb side, the entirety of the of the four. So you don't have to move around left, right, fighting those annoying beams. You can just stand in one spot and just take down a whole line upside. That's why it's so strong here. So Deimos in North America, Europe, Brazil, gets, and internationally, of course, gets banned quite a bit, specifically on that gaming lab. And this is the punishment. If you're as he borrows, you ban out the Tuberal, you ban out the Maverick. And it's like, okay, they can't just open up the walls that easily, right? But what about the verticality from below? You'd expect Hasib to have had more of a presence downstairs, maybe trying to roam a bit more vertically to deny the Deimos, but perhaps he didn't expect it. Yeah, well, I guess the only Roma they had to do so was Tahar, and he was taken out in Kitchen very early on. I think it must have been pre-placed drones, some kind of information for Diwals, as they caught him just flanking back around, but yeah, really great start there for Diwals on the defense. 4-2 split on the attack, not unheard of, but just really good look at the start of this game. Now Hasib have to do the same on their attacking side, but Diwals look very confident. They're leaning into this Maverick Bam with the Bandit and the Kaid. Will they be able to trick this wall? No. Not it. Uh, it's very delicate timing. The only way to counter a Thermite Ace is if you're basically pre-placing the Bandit as you see the EMP on the ground. Because then you can basically finish the first Bandit battery. The same second the EMP pops, that's going to deny wall number one. Then you will have time to deny wall number two by instantly flicking over and place that second Bandit battery. But because the bandit is like shooting a drone, looking at the floor, being distracted basically, the timing opens up to basically miss the timing. Oops, Souffle would have heard behind him, but he doesn't have the opportunity oh. to go for the battery, but he has gone and found a spray onto Din, jumping in the other window conference. Now Baz has also taken out Harama. I don't know where that was. Must have been over aggressive either at the top of Aqua or on rafters. On the roof he's found that pick. And if that wasn't for that, then I really would say Daiwas are looking really pretty this round. But unfortunately, losing that player does forfeit their advantage. It forfeits the Azami and all her util for the rest of the round. Yeah, Ash on low HP, though, finds himself or herself downstairs. But Ash ain't no Deimos, as we spoke about earlier. You could see the entire, you know, bomb site from below right now if you're a Deimos with a... You get it active. This oh! Is that C4 is beautiful. Lands in the middle of the breach, finds both players, and that might just be the round for Direwolves. Yeah. Souffle has now found a 4k. Eek has already had an ace this game. Let's see if Souffle can deliver the same. All up to Fatah now. That was an insane C4. We've seen that C4 before, but it's, it's all about the timing, right? And really hit the jackpot there, getting the double. Is this going to be the spray for the ace? Souffle loses oh. it, but Seal is there to refrag. A very solid round from Diwolves. So many details going their way. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, both teams are doing a similar thing on, like, the macro level, like, the bigger picture. Which walls they're opening, how they're opening, where the bandit trick and where the mirror notes are going. But it's the micro, those small decisions that are being made, clearly favoring one team over another. Also... Usually that C4 doesn't land in the middle of the breach because it's like opened by Hibana or a secondary can opener or the Silma. But because you Thermite opened the wall, it's yeah, almost impossible to miss that C4 toss. Yeah. It just means that it lands, you know, outside or slightly outside and will get a lot more radius basically on that explosion. So really well done for Diabols. They are still in control in the attack and that continues forward to defense so far at least. Their lineup, I actually like this a lot. They play like roaming capable operators in like the castle, the Valkyrie, and then they also play the Goyo. And the Goyo is amazing. You see it on Clubhouse, you see it on Bank, you see it on Nighthaven Labs. You can slap down your Goyo canisters on the bomb side to stop like a rush or a push or a plant. But because that's like passive util, you just slap down in prep phase, you can now run top floor or first floor and go for a deep roam with the Valkyrie with the castle. So this is a utility setup where you have side presence, you have roaming presence, and you're very dynamic in your setup. That's what I see Borrowers, they didn't quite have that. They were super roamy or super turtly and yeah. couldn't really play both sides. Yeah, they're not half and halfing it. Another thing no, I love about the Goyo. <laughs> Another thing I love about the Goyo is you get the Vector, which by the way, one of the best guns, ah. like the fire rate on that thing is insane. And it you is. get the bloody magnified scope. Like you're winning every pixel fight with that. Is that fair? You know, is, is it fair <laughs> no. to give the Vector a good scope? I'm, it should have Ironside only, you know? Just watch <laughs> people get super mad about it. 
Uh, some guns, uh, man. It's like a Buzz G A cog, you know. It ruined that <laughs> weapon as well nowadays. You know what Vector A cog reminds me of was the old SMG 11 A cog, because the Vector and the oh SMG God. are actually kind of similar. Like, not much recoil at the start, bit of recoil over time, and mm. just really high fire rate guns. Like, they're both insane. You give that thing an A cog, I mean, it's just it's a machine. Bit of a uh, Intel lackluster room play right now from his warriors. They're shooting through walls and holding passive angles. They spent over a minute and ten seconds already, and they've just entered the building. I guess their pre-placed drones weren't all that strong. They, you know, only have three drones being shot so far. So I don't feel like there's much, much contesting here on the Intel game. Diables, we see the silhouettes. They're mostly sitting in corners. They got their dedicated spots. A jiggle peek there for Intel. Surely you don't swing that Harambe. Okay, he okay. does. That's smoke in the grave. That's a bit of a questionable play, but hey, on to a 4v5. Yeah, I mean, overall, decent read from Hasib. As you said, a little bit low on information, but able to find the players on the cutoff regardless. That was so close to a kill from Souffle. Here comes a big flank. Uh -oh. No, ACOG from Bin Bin does eventually finish him off. Looking for another one. The Blitz comes towards oh. him. He's got the impact! And goodbye, Blitz! The Diffuser cold on the ground as well. The push for Hasib started off well, but it has all but fallen apart. 4v2 for Dials, a nigh unlosable situation, and Fatai has got to go and get that Diffuser back, but it is being very closely guarded. Up goes the oh. castle, down goes the castle. Nice pick from Baz, but still, that Diffuser has not been claimed. Naz is clean with it, but the flank just keeps happening. One, two, three, you got all the rumors upstairs still. Nesting, that is dynamic <laughs> setup. The knife comes out! Bass gets the kill instead, though. Could clutch it out. 20 seconds, the fuse in hand now, yeah, finally. Both defeated. the last defenders have fallen back towards the bomb side. The issue is Bass does not know this. With the aggression earlier, he's expecting a fourth roamer, but we know there is none. Yeah, Time is ticking down 10 seconds. Good luck, have fun. You gotta sprint down a staircase, drop down that hatch, and hope for the best. Yeah. Look, Souffle tried the BM with the knife. It didn't work. At least Baz wasn't embarrassed like that. But there's no way he's getting to the bomb site on time to plant that diffuser. Daryl was having a little bit too much fun with it, and we really saw that with uh, the Valkyrie going for that knife. I have to see that again. Daryl's are simply in control. Uh, this roam was not addressed. The flanks were perfect. They timed it well together. And... Yeah, despite Hasib starting all right with a decent kill, it just uh, did not go down. Oh, you mean Harambe donating a kill for free on smoke? That yeah, kill? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what I want to see the replay of. Imagine Baz, he, just <laughs> he gets completely jump scared. I would have uh, cacked my pants if that had happened to me in a game, but thankfully uh, he wasn't embarrassed quite that bad. I mean, Baz has been very spectacular and very quick in these gunfights. It just seems that it's not been the story for his entire team. I mean, they have the Blitz, they have the perfect anti-roaming roaming operator, but the Blitz is walking on, on his own by kitchen hallway on 20 HP. It's not the ideal way to go about it. So I kind of want to see again more logic and more, okay, this makes sense from his Sea Warriors. You got the Blitz, okay, put him in somewhere, put a gun behind him, a drone in front of him. Make him just clear out the map and, you know, favoring your team. Don't send him on his own. Don't send in your guns alone, either. Play to your strengths in your operator pickup, because why play Blitz Dokubi if you're not going to make that play? And now they play Dokubi, but Dokubi is nerfed, remember? She gets the first phone call 45 seconds into action phase. You can't just call and Blitz rush the building unless you wait 45 seconds first. So with that nerf, basically, you have to take drone control, walk into the map manually, and then make the phone call happen and follow up on it. You can't just wait 45. Thankfully, Diabos again, they surrender a kill early on by being overly aggressive. This time it's Sufi and Bandit, so a good operator to lose, if you will. But as he worries, two rounds in a row opening kill, they have to make this into a victory and convert that, not just fall off here. Sib haven't had a lot of great rounds on the defensive side, oh, sorry, on the attacking side so far. But as you said, opening picks hasn't been Attackers the worst problem. The now it looks like they the want to go for something aggressive, Nick. They're not looking to do what most teams do, where you have to clear out the whole top four, have to clear out the whole 
bottom floor. They're looking to use this Blitz to just get inside real quick. What they don't realize is Pika is here for the backstab. As the Blitz has gone straight into side, Pika can come back for one and potentially look for more as well. Doesn't know where this Blitz oh. is, and he will go down to Taha. Now the defense just relies on Seal to make this comeback happen. Might find one. Good positioning gets him Fata. But against a Blitz and two other players, I don't think this is possible. See, might be finding their first round of attack. And he trades oh. with the Blitz. He gets the Blitz, but the Thermite takes him down. Solid start to the attack. Finally, we see something out of Hasib. We need a few more of those. It looked like Hasib went for a, a bit of a different take. You know, Blitz runs into Garage goes towards the side door and realizes, hey, this door has been castle barricaded. Oh, snap. I gotta go for something else. But the fact that Hasib went for a illogical or different attack there massively played in their favor. I don't think Diavos truly knew where the attack was actually coming from. And the Dogby phone call was timed perfectly, by the way. They were either answering phones or they were unable to play in those rat corners comfortably. And they just bought them those like five valuable seconds where I see they got into the building, they got into the bomb site, and they got those first pick or two and snowballed from there. But that's tertiary bomb site. That's, you know, the one you're supposed to win on attack, the hard one to defend. And now you gotta basically go flawless on the primary, secondary, and tertiary again. And then it's overtime! <laughs> Diabolos, you know, they're up 6-3. They're gonna call their timeout. I quite like this, actually. I think it's a bit controversial to take a timeout when you're in the lead like this. Because you're giving your opponent a chance to breathe and talk to support staff and get back into things. But if you're cooking up a strat, or you think you have the exact read on what they're gonna do, or what you can do to just mess them up, you should go for this. Defense. Call the timeout, play your one really attackers. specifically designed strat, and end at 7-3. If they win this round, it's genius. And if they don't, well, they still got two more chances. That's the thing, taking the tactical timeout, yeah, maybe it gives a little boost to the opposition who now have a bit of a chance to regroup, but also it gives you a chance to make sure that that win the previous round doesn't snowball. And even if this just returns to, like, let's say a 50-50 chance of Diables winning any round from now on, that's still pretty damn good odds. That's three chances at 50-50. And any of them you win, you're looking like uh, it's been a solid game. I mean, Diables have been really good, especially on their attacking side. Like, a 4-2 split was amazing. Two quick defenses on the primary two sides. I think the game is likely to end here on this command center bomb site. It's really on Hasib to prove otherwise. Saw that uh, Hasib had a drone inside the bomb site, getting a lot of insult from Bass. It's still alive on the B chassis, actually. So they saw all five defenders. They know about the Kaid. So they got the thatch on the board, of course. I think Dying Wolves is safe to expect that the Blitz will be in play here because it's been working out. It's the third time in a row. And I think the Fenrir plays into that. The Fenrir can shut down any immediate aggression. It's a bit easier to hide than a Melusi Banshee, for example. So it can sometimes go undroned and unnoticed and catch you by surprise when you're entering as an attacker. Flores is good here to clear out the Cavalry Raptors of Asami. Oh, surprise, surprise, has the shotgun. Can the bandit trick, though? Gonna get the got it. charge? Yep. He's got it. And the Surely. first part, I think. Oh. Almost. First part goes through. At least he gets away with his life, because it looked sketchy there for a second. Fatah almost peaked that in time. So taking out the Exothermic is not bad, and it does force an extra Selma to be used to make this a walkable breach. Yeah. It's, uh... It's best case scenario, besides getting bull falls, of course, is to get the extra three charge denied. The big thing with Diabolos as well, as you said, is he stayed alive. Having numbers advantage or even numbers against the Blitz is key because he will die to crossfires. He cannot just rush at one versus three. Blitz is great in the one versus ones. More players you have alive, the more map control you have, of course, on your side of the building, and the more crossfires against the Blitz. The question now is, where do they go? Where do they attack? Looks like it's going to be Rafters. They're going in with the Blitz, but looks like Azami is able to get back and manage to reinforce off the wall at the same time. The attack has flooded into the top Rafters, but job done for the defense. They've just seceded that map control and said, that's fine. You can have it. Well, pretty happy with what we've got. Meanwhile, Baz has found an entry and Pika is down on the floor. This is looking solid. Maybe Hasib can keep this momentum going. He gets like, got injured by the drone hole garage, I believe, so that's a bit of a... Nasty angle to get down from, and now the bits will shine because only three defenders, now four with 20 hits on Pika. He can make his win for Aqua, isolated player, and Bass has been so great nice. in his gunfights. Fatah falls first, though Seal's a better player in that one. 45 seconds, 4v3 favoring defense right now. 
Yeah, there is no entry here for Hasib on rafters. They have to funnel in from IT and from top blue, and that's where they go. In goes the Blitz. There's still a player oh. inside. It's Harambe. He springs up and he's looking for something, but Baz finishes him off with the pistol. Almost a win there for Dials, but by the skin of their teeth, Hasib keep this game alive. Baz is nasty. I mean, he finds the opening, he finds the final gun in one versus one. I mean, he is never afraid to take a gunfight, and he'll also do it off pace. There are so many times where an attacker will make a play at a timing where you're kind of expecting it, but that swing out there from Baz, middle of nowhere, just happens, gets that pick, and puts his team in a great spot. Pika falling there very, very early, swinging out aggressively. He was 20 HP in the mirror. But I think the big issue we saw right there from Marambe, there were almost no feed holes on the soft wall leading to Aqua Hallway. They were only all the way on the far left from the inside of the bomb site, and they were so far down the ground, unless you were proning, you couldn't see anything. The whole point of playing that Aqua Hallway is you open up that bottom portion, and you should feel very unsafe as an attacker by going in there. Sure, the Blitz who has a shield can maybe get past those holes, not a big deal because it's so noisy, but the Fragger behind him, the Thatcher, shouldn't be able to thrive in that area of the map. Viable still, as we said, they called a tactical timeout, but because they called it when they're up 6-3, they can talk about the entirety of the remaining of the game. Not just that final round, like sure they cooked it up, that was their one and done, but they still got these upcoming rounds to work with as well. They could have talked about mentality, playstyle, play passive or aggressive, and all they need is one round to go their way and they'll be fine. I see warriors, their secret weapon is Bass. If he gets shut down, I don't think they have what it takes to find those openings anymore. Yeah. Oh well, Bio Wolves get another chance to go to a really strong bomb site and see if they can make it work. Now, this one on the basement was very hectic last time around, and it was open and shut case for the Romers. That was what won it for mm. them. And I think Hasib have realized, look, we don't want to deal with the Rome. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna bring Ying. Is it a rush? We're gonna bring Blitz. We're gonna rush. We're gonna go yep. fast straight in through Exo. But guess what? It's Castle Barricades galore. <laughs> Nothing they can do about it. This is nine hits. This push has been well and truly telegraphed. And the exothermic is going to go straight for this wall. I like this. I mean, the castles buy them time, right? The rush is <laughs> not going to happen. The Goy Fire pops as well, so it's going to stall for 20 seconds. World's it gives slowest us, rush. Uh, Diavos, <laughs> the time to now think about their approach. They double Goy the canister. That's why it's such a good operator. Now they can communicate, they can think, oh, guys, what do we do when they go? Who's going to cover what angles? Whose job is it to shut down the plant? Right it can't now, move. Just stall out. <laughs> Then is stuck. Like, he cannot yeah, move did... an inch. <laughs> That's just hilarious. He's also getting gassed as well. Dials have bought themselves time. Like, this is a rush that's happening a minute too late. And the defense is so ready for it. Harambe is nice and aggressive now as well. Inches away from the position around the corner. Pika comes in with a big C4. Baz, though. The magic card. The special element. Well, Hasib does find a kill. And Taha is forcing that defuser yeah, down. Where is the plant denial? It's nowhere to be seen. Direwolves now have to retake, numbers disadvantage, and Fatah's found a double from the rear stairs, eventually coming back for it, Pika finds one. His teammate is down on the ground and Taha's finished him off, a nigh impossible task, no C4 to speak of, going up against a Blitz, and just one other player, he's made this a 3k, we've seen an ace from him already this game, but it can't be the double up. The C keep themselves alive, they're firing up, they found another round, one more to get to match point. Oh, I hate to do this, but I gotta be a little bit critical here of Harambe. He had the most crucial position with the strongest operator for that spot in that round. He's playing smoke by that big pillar, and he's just tossing out toxic babes, which is great to stop a rush. That's not the issue. The issue is you're tossing out toxic babes, which is the only plant denial that they had while the Goyo fire was already there. You're basically throwing gas into the fire. It denies the exact same area of the map. You're wasting that crucial gadget. Had he, you know, held on to those, Blitz goes for a plant, you toss out the smoke, you stall for 15 seconds. Blitz goes for a plant again, you do the exact same thing. You do that two or three times. But he chucked them out. One by window, one by breach, one by hatch in quick succession. And they lost all that time they had gained by stalling out the Castle Barricade and Goya Fire. So, small misstep there from Harambe on an individual level in the strategy, but also Hasib Warriors, all the players are actually stepping up in their gunfights right now. Sure, Bass, he's still the one to really initiate those opening engagements, but we saw every single player being so willing and so ready to take on the gunfights. 
And you gotta respect that. When you're down facing match point and one mistake can lead to the loss of a game, we sometimes see players kind of chicken out, play it super safe. It comes down to risk assessment. And it's very important that you look at these gunfights as, you know, a 50-50 if that's what they are. Because some players will say, well, it's a 50-50, but if we lose, it's over. So you don't feel super confident taking it, but you have to stay confident, especially on the attacking side. Oh, yeah. Haseeb are genuinely looking great right now. It's funny, we were talking during the breaks, like we have these break content where players from different teams are creating tier lists of all the teams in the league. People actually rated Haseeb, like a lot of them put them in like C or even B tier. Which, considering this team has struggled to ever get out of the bottom two, that's a pretty high praise. Even teams like Bleed were, were rating Haseeb over some of the other teams in this league. And if they can push Die Wolves to overtime here, what a statement that would be, especially from 6-3 down. Here comes the Bandit Juggle. Souffle, oh, he misses it. He needs to get out quickly. Oh. He will fall. He saves his life, but he hadn't got that exothermic charge. And so it does enable a big entry here for Haseeb. So we've seen this play out a couple of times now. A Sieb get the breach successfully. Usually with the ace, this time with Thermite, this case scenario. And it falls apart in the mid round when they walk in through good baskets of kills, same exact story again and again. They can't shut this man down when it comes to those opening engagements. Then your mind goes off with the nearsightedness. They need to lash out here at some point for diables. If you sit in these corners, you will slowly get cho uh, choked out rather by the utility, the flashbangs, the smoke grenades, and the blitz more notably. Try and even back to a 4v4. Fight on Aqua side. Fight on meeting if they go for that spot. You cannot just pick four separate corners and expect to win. That's a good pick right there. Yeah, a very big aggressive off angle from Thin. Very dangerous. Souffle is also going for an aggressive yeah. off angle. They it seems like to. this is the read from Die Wolves. They're looking to play risky. I think it'll work against Tassib. But Baz is still alive. This guy's on 13 kills. He's almost caught up with Pika who aced in round one. So he's the guy we need to look at now. Haseeb comes for a backstab. That's really well played. Pika is down. Now Taha gets aggressive. What? Sees the Azami. Oh. Harambe caught asleep at the wheel. I think overtime might well be on the cards. Souffle's off angle now exposed. But Baz, for the first time in forever, loses his fight. Makes it winnable now. Bin Bin and Souffle just have to hold on. A flash goes out and Souffle can't find his pick. There's Tahi here on the Bliss, knows that he's got this crossfire to deal with, he can't march on forward. And that Diffuser is all the way in IT, so out goes the smoke, but Bin Bin, he's made this a 2v2, the Blitz has to come in big here, and it does for Taha, a 1v1 Run. for Souffle, up against the Blitz, and Taha's got his shield fully charged, now he doesn't have that Diffuser as of yet, all he has oh. to do is run, but Taha clutches it on the Blitz, Hasib have points on the board. How? How did it happen? It was such a well-played round from Diablo since it came down to the two versus two where they just sacrifice each other, right? The Blitz Taha played it so well. The smoke in between the crossfires enables himself, gets in, get the first pick, but it's a trade back and forth. And it's so easy to say, just run away, just hide, because you're worried what if Blitz has the fuser? What if they have enough side control? I don't think anybody had any idea that the case was down outside the breeze the entire time. That was never a plant attempt from his warriors. That was a kill strat where they had one choice because he did not have case control. You die mid air, you lose the round. It's six six overtime. Die will stay on defense, which I honestly think is bad for them because they cannot deal with task bits whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, what a flip of the switch, right? I mean Die Wolves were insane on attack. 4-2 split. They won their first two defenses, and that's match point. Since then, four rounds in a row, Haseeb have made this comeback a reality. Die Wolves have already used their tactical timeout. That ship has sailed. Haseeb are now in the advantage. Like, believe it or not, Haseeb are in the advantage. I mean... My prediction, a lot of people's predictions, are looking pretty good right now with this comeback kind of manifesting itself into existence. But for Diabols, I worry about their mental state and the tilt factor because the way they're losing some of these rounds... <laughs> I would be tilted. I would be like, guys, what are we doing? This should have been over like four rounds ago. Come on! So 
I really hope they can reel that in mentally at least and just kind of reset for overtime, play a best of three in round count, give it their all, and not just kind of fall flat now with this snowball very quickly becoming very, very large in size. And to think the last time these teams met in Blastar 6, I was one convincingly 7-3, and that was the last time these teams played each other, Hasib. Uh oh Himself finds the opening pick, Souffle, who had a phenomenal start to the game, has since been a little bit asleep, since overtaken now by Baz in terms of frags. It's on the IQ, by the way, a really nice idea to counter a lot of this util brought to the table, the Capcan, the Valkyrie, the Mute. Hasib looking control. And I like this, they get the pick, and they go slow. They realize, guys, we got the opening pick. We bought ourselves a good 20 seconds or so of advantage. And that, of course, the, the man count is an advantage. Slow it down. Hold on to it. Don't throw it by being overly aggressive. Don't let the blitz go alone. For example, they learned their lesson. Taha walks in with intel. You have a soft destroy behind him. Bin Bin swings oh. out. Lose the engagement. Bass is too good in the 1v1s. Yeah. He's going to have to win another one here. Harambe around the corner with the shotgun. Pika's found here. Oh, timing's a bit off. Lot of damage done! Very what? risky, surely a refrag here. No! What? Harambe! With his trusty shotgun gets it done! It's up to Din now to pick up the pieces of what should have been a winnable round for Hasib, but his foe has far vacated the premises. Harambe has gone back downstairs. Din has one flashbang, one Ram Boogie drone. His R4C and the shotgun to work with, but he's walked into a cab can trap too. Oh man, that's a tilter. It's looking so good. I think Bass missed every single pull on towards Rampe there because I thought he was as good as dead. Dropping from the high ground, shotgun in hand, IQ being pretty far away. Then if he can clutch this, I mean, that would be a massive round for him individually. But Diabolos is just playing keep away. They're playing yeah. far deep into the bomb side, and we don't know if there's any captain traps left. I mean, the, the, every doorway could be dangerous. At least he does take down one of the mirror windows and finds the pick onto Harambe. 1v1 now. Did is checking for Capcan traps. He won't be fooled again. No, he will! Oh! There was another one on the door. Now he has to plant. There's no time. 5 HP. Pika must come around and deny this. A C4 still in pocket. This is the winning ingredient. No! He was already pre-placed. Only one bullet from the Vector is what he needs, and he gets it. A valiant effort from Din, but Pika has finally got Diwolves another match point and has Sieb not too happy about it. The big thing about the Cavern Trap isn't even the fact that it put down, it put Din down rather on 5 HP. It's the fact that it puts him down on 5 HP and he loses all game sound. That super frustrating, you know, feature where when you're low on health, you can't hear a damn thing. You're planting with like, what, nine seconds left? You could have gone for a fake, you could have pushed for a kill, but it didn't have nothing to do but just hold F and hope for the best because he can't have any game sound right now. The C4 gets popped, he's pre-firing the door to his left because he doesn't hear what's happening around him. Super, super frustrating. But this is a bit of a mental warfare right now because I think the tilt for both teams right now, like you're losing rounds, you should absolutely be winning and vice versa. It's a back and forth, attacks looks really good, but then defenders win. Now we side swap. Diabolos, they haven't attacked in a, in a long while. Now they gotta adjust on the fly to get this final round victory. If not, then it's gonna be a 7-7, you swap again. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mess here for both teams. Yeah, yeah but Diabolos were really, really good on attack. They won four out of their six, and one of the ones that they lost was the Hasib one versus two, that very much Diabolos could have won. So I don't think Dial should be sweating right now. We've got a technical pause while we get some of these players back into the game. And Harambe is looking calm. I saw him type in the chat, what's going on? I think he's very eager <laughs> to just get this over and done with. But some of the Hasee players have to restart their match. Or restart the game, rather. Match not getting restarted, thank God. Let's just restart the match. <laughs> I'm sure they would like to at this point. But Dial's, I mean, they have been pushed really hard today. And we certainly hadn't expected that out of them. Like... Just to put this into perspective, the last time these guys met, it was a 7-3 in favor of Direwolves. Um, and Direwolves have a very strong track record against teams like Hasib and teams like Knock Knock as well. The only yeah. team in Asia League that actually was beaten by Hasib in Stage 1 was Daystar, who failed to qualify for Stage 2. And that really does go to show how much of a big deal this would be for Hasib Warriors in order to win this match.
And she's just like how dominant Diabos were in the first like three or four rounds. They looked like they were in absolutely full control. And it's been these very small moments like this 1v1 right here against the demos while you're getting tracked. It's like, okay, Hasib wins that for his team. And then they just build up this round after round. They go on the attack. They pick up the blitz. It looks terrible in their first attempt. Like the blitz was like, that's not the solution that they needed. But then they try it again and again and again. And every single time they do it, they do a little bit better. To the point where Diables are pagan operators solely for the purpose of countering the blitz. They're playing Legion, Smoke, C4s, Goyo, they're playing Fenrir now all of a sudden. They realized that that Blitz could not really be stopped. And uh, the only worry that I had, like I mentioned earlier, when you side swap in overtime, it's gonna be a long while since you've played the opposite side, and it kind of shifts the entire pacing that you had figured out, right? You're defending against the Warriors, you're expecting a certain thing to happen. Six rounds later, now you gotta, or actually seven rounds later, you gotta flip it, and now you gotta start controlling the pace on your attack inside instead, and you're in overtime, where it's a bit more risky, and you don't wanna lose, you don't wanna throw. It's, uh,. Again, as I said, a big testament to the mental aspect of Siege right now in this yeah. match. Yeah. And like we can see in the player reactions, Hasib are so fired up. These guys were yeah. down 6-3. They should have lost this a long time ago, and yet they have been looking fire. I love their reactions. I actually thought originally when we went to their tactical timeout... Oh, wait, for a second, just look at that. That's the Diewall's win reaction to getting a match point there. And it was almost <laughs> nothing. Compare that to nothing, Hasib. No. I thought Hasib himself actually ran, went to the toilet during their uh, their tactical timeout because I couldn't see him on camera. I think he was just leaning backwards. I thought they weren't taking their tactical timeout very seriously. I think quite the opposite. I think Hasib are taking this match as seriously as they've ever yeah, taken a match <laughs> in Rainbow Six before. And it's paying off. They pushed overtime. They could push it to a 15th. I mean, if you Diabos and you believe in your mind that you should have won and closed up this round a while ago, I understand why there is frustration and, you know, you clutch around, you should be celebrating more, but there's something that happens to a lot of teams like you, you spiral negatively very easily, and it's very difficult to get hyped up when it's going well. Some players, you know, they're your classical hype man or Mr. Positive. And they're so annoying sometimes when you're losing because like, come on guys, we got the next round, don't worry about it. But they're so necessary to having a team when things are not going according to plan. Diables, we saw them do the shenanigans on attack. They had a Ying round, they had a glass round, and they were hovering glass for a short while there. But they're not gonna risk it. They're gonna go for a really stable, consistent, dynamic setup. They can roam clear, they can hit the side, they can pretty much do it all at like an okay level, but they don't excel in one particular area. And I think that's basically case scenario here because you don't really know fully what you're up against. You have all your drones alive, so what that means is that you don't have a ton of input to work off of when the round begins. You gotta figure that out throughout the entirety of this round, and now you're prepared for pretty much everything. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that we don't see the Jackal, though. Yeah. We saw it have a lot of impact in the first time. At least we have Pika back on the IQ. Not only is he an insane fragger on this, but... When you got Valkyrie on the board, you want that IQ in play. A C... Oh, no. Taha, rather. It's cornered and put down. Good opening kill there for Direwolves. Things are looking grim for Hasib Warriors. This bomb site. It's very solid on the attack for Diewolves. They know what they're doing. They've got the ram above. They're looking to clear out the rest of these roamers in the middle floor. Yeah, if they had a Jackal now, that would really make life easier for them. I think the only attacker you could really change out here would be the Grim of all things. But the Grim is so good for sight. The red pings, the drones are so good right now for Diewolves. They have so much intel. We see my Roman of bottom Aqua. I don't know if they know Smoke is there or Mute rather from Fatal. But if he don't know, he strikes out, he could get a kill. Uh. So Pika's close. found his, but here comes the backstab from Fatah and Baz as well. This guy is having a life game. 15 kills now for the Legion. As Diewolves look to try and reply, they do. Hasib an overpick. He didn't know about that long yeah. angle. And now Fatah is so far from home. Baz is the only player anywhere near the bomb site. These Rome hunters can continue their job and try and find Fatah, or they could focus up on site. It looks like they're going to do the first one. But Fatah finds another kill. There's no information ahead of these players, but a trade is a trade. That will favor the attacking side. 2v1 now for Direwolves. 
Boss is the perfect player to put if you're at Sea Boris in this one versus two, however. He's been so sharp, so quick, so excellent throughout the entirety of this match, especially on the attack. Now he can also do that on defense. 35 seconds left in Divos. They gotta respect the fact that he might be roaming still. He is Lesion. Two commands in pocket, almost three. Has some castle barricades, but I can also see this mirror window. If he gives up cargo control, he might lose a lot of map presence. Ooh. I know where he is, but. He's got information as well on the back of that bulletproof camera they're all watching. Can he swing this? He knows the angle! He oh, finds the one. first one, but Pika clutches it in the 1v1! Die Wolves were pushed to their limit today. They got the better of Haseeb, and they're very happy about it. Seal with a celebratory moment there <laughs> as well. A beautiful game, a beautiful way to end it for Die Wolves. At no moment could they sit back and relax. They were pushed to their limits today, Pengu. And uh, oh. a win is a win. A win is a win, but I mean, I, I think I know why they're not celebrating too hard there. You know, I, I like Seal, you know, bringing the, the vibes, smiling, etc. But that was a frustrating victory. And I think they're going to feel a little bit disappointed that they didn't they close that out a little bit cleaner. Yeah. And we'll break it all down for you guys on the desk. That was a quick throw, James. That was a very quick throw. I barely, <laughs> I barely heard the words finish before I realized what was going on. But I think that's that, that game might sum up where Hasib Warriors are at this stage, guys. I, I, I don't want to go too deep on, on Dire Wolves just to begin with, because I think, look, obviously they win. They could have done so for three or four rounds there. But Hasib Warriors have shown a lot of grit uh, last week and now backing up again tonight. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think it is pretty reflective of both teams, but honing in on Hasib uh, specifically, mm. their fight in the second half to win four rounds in a row on attack on labs with some very close calls, I think was a really good reflection of their grit and determination and how far they've come as a team. And as Dev sort of mentioned mm. over the course of the cast, the, the teams, um, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the content break that we have ranking them as, you know, in the B or the C tier, I, I wouldn't have rated them that highly, but I think a performance like they've shown tonight, if that can be consistently replicated and they're able to sneak into the top six, I think they are very much worthy of that uh, spot. Unfortunately for them, though, it is just the one point this evening, so they don't really get a whole lot of value. But off the back of what they showed against Bleed, what they've been able to show here tonight, I think they have a strong foundation. And mm -hmm. if they're able to tidy things up and look a bit more sound defensively so that there's not as much pressure on attack to, to push OT... Um, yep. In future games, I think they can continue to be a threat. Um, Baz as well, obviously, standout player plus Unreal. six um, this evening. So good performance from him. And if they have a sort of star player that they can build around, who knows what the future has in store. It's pretty exciting, honestly. I think a sip of uh, shown that they deserve to be here in the league. And as you said, they're, they're really showing their pick. Guys, I just I want to ask you real quick, who am I? <laughs> He's trying to hide. He's, trying, he's like the kid in the back of the class yeah. that doesn't want the teacher to pick him for a question. You, you know what? You know what? Jake's worked so hard. We're going to give him a break. We'll be back after this.